This is Witchbase News for Friday the 24th of May 2024. I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week one commander completes a challenge to Beagle Point like no other as the attack begins the end game approaches for Titan Haddad and patch 1806 arrives next week bringing huge changes to influence and payouts in the Thargoid war. You know how this bit goes please like, subscribe and ding that little bell so that YouTube shows you all our content and if you'd like to directly help our work here at the Burr Pit you can also support us through Patreon. Links to that and everything else are in the description below. Beagle Point is one of the most remote star systems from Sol sitting as it does in direct galactic north opposition to the cradle of humanity 65,279 light years away and requiring a vessel with at least 34 light years of jump range in order to reach it. Isham's Reach is one of the most distant objects we can reach in Elite in a ship and it lies over 547 light years the other side of Beagle requiring engineering and frameshift drive material injections to reach. Getting to that system is a whole other feat unto itself. Taking just one ship to these two locations unladen is hard enough. Taking one ship to these locations with one tonne of Hutton mugs and one tonne of Lavian brandy on board for each location as a tribute to those commanders in our community who are no longer with us ratchets the whole endeavour up another tier. But when you consider taking every single ship, fighter and SRV in the game to both Beagle and Ishams dropping the tribute cargo in each system and then coming back to the bubble again quite honestly you begin to run out of tears. Nonetheless that is what Canon Interstellar Research regular Commander Sovereign Winter has done and it has taken them years to do it. The first of the trips in a sidewinder left the bubble in March of 2019. The last, a federal corvette, finished its contribution in February this year. With the addition of 4 more ships to the game this year however the Valiant Commander is it seems not done yet. Plans are already underway to embark on the journey yet again in the Python Mark II, the Type 8 and whatever else we can expect from 2024. To get the full story on this truly epic endeavour straight from the horses Remlock check out Commander Sovereign Winters video linked in the description below. The attack on the 4th of the 8 Thargoid Titans that have been threatening the bubble for well over a year now, Titan Haddad, has started. As expected when the servers returned from their weekly refresh on Thursday morning Haddad was left with control of just two systems after a significant and sustained effort by independent commanders and organised AX groups such as the AXI. Anyone even remotely familiar with manoeuvring in Thargoid space will be aware that even supercruise in bug territory comes with its own challenges these days and the space around Haddad more so than any Titan we've faced before for the simple fact that it's situated nearly 40,000 light seconds from the entry star right at the tail end of the system. As you can imagine the timely arrival of the supercruise overcharge capable frameshift drive at this point in the war is no coincidence and whilst its use doesn't prevent Thargoid interdictions from supercruise you do manage to cover significant distances between those interdictions. In my journey to Haddad shortly after the servers came back online I was hyperdicted once and interdicted three times using SCO before I managed to get to the cloud which for me at least has been about the average for the other titans with less distance to be traversed between the entry star and the outskirts of the caustic cloud. One final wrinkle in the Haddad story, the ringed body that it orbits does have a landable moon around it. At the time of writing it was behind its parent body and it didn't have line of sight on Haddad but if you fancy getting a different perspective on the Titan explosion this could be a candidate body to set down on and watch from a distance if it's even possible but you'll need to do your own science there to find out if Haddad is even visible from the moon on the day when it comes. 
It is expected that her dad will fall quite quickly once the weekend kicks in proper but it's too early to tell at the time of recording how long you have if you're looking to add another Titan star to your decal collection. It seems unlikely either way that the beleaguered danger daffodil will survive the week however. While we're talking all things Thargoid, Frontier announced this week that patch 1806 will be arriving in the game next Tuesday the 28th of May and that patch is almost entirely dedicated to Thargoid war balances and changes. The patch notes were, unusually for Frontier, released with the announcement about the patch rather than with the patch itself and are fairly extensive in nature. They are quite lengthy. I won't go through them line by line here. They are of course linked below this video if you want to check them out for yourself but the reasoning for the fairly big changes that are coming are themselves worthy of note and it has to be said in my mind at least not unwelcome. The post starts by acknowledging something that has been painfully evident in the community for some time. Whilst there are numerous gameplay options for participation in the Thargoid war, a lot of which don't involve any combat with Thargoids whatsoever, the respective effectiveness of each potential activity has not necessarily been terribly commensurate with the effort or, importantly, the risk involved in that activity. Case in point, the money making meta in the game shifted with the arrival of the Orthrus variant Thargoid. Orthrus have no boss style fight mechanics whatsoever. Contrary to the regular Thargoid interceptor encounter of any flavour there's no phases, no special attacks, nothing. In actuality they don't fight back at all. They leave a caustic trail behind themselves and their proximity will rot guardian components in your ship but other than that all they do is attempt to run away and even that they do quite slowly. They can be easily killed in an unengineered ship running off the shelf enhanced AX weapons. They spawn endlessly, literally, at active Thargoid spire surface sites. You don't need to seek out rare spawn POIs to find them and each one pays out 40 million credits. To put that into perspective a basilisk second tier Thargoid kill is a reasonably specialist fight and, at the time of recording, pays out half that amount. Likewise the current absolutely most effective way of beating back the Thargoid menace right now is not rescuing civilians or reinforcing supply lines, defending stations under attack or sabotaging Thargoid surface installations but rather using tissue sampling limpets on Thargoid scouts. A relatively risk free endeavour that is very easily repeatable with minimal effort. The patch on Tuesday is aiming to change not only both of those imbalances but a whole raft more right across the war effort, increasing the effectiveness of the various activities and in most cases the associated rewards. Elsewhere in the war system clearance difficulty was, previously, exponentially tougher the closer to the titan that the fighting got, making the last few systems extremely difficult to take. From Tuesday the system difficulty will instead be linear, meaning getting the remaining Thargoid titans down to the highly vulnerable state should now be much more achievable. When a given titan in that state is attacked directly they will take more damage more quickly, in turn making their last few hours much more unpleasant and our efforts against them much more efficient. The changes still don't stop there however. We did have a sneaking suspicion here that the Thargoid spire sites had somewhat slipped into becoming nothing more than Orthrus farming, tourism and sightseeing hotspots with most commanders using them for little else directly associated with the war effort itself. Whilst those suspicions haven't been directly confirmed by Frontier it does appear that the changes regarding what FDEV refer to as spread pushback across a given spire's sphere of influence has been significantly changed to make actions against the spire itself much more effective and therefore more attractive as a gameplay option in the war effort. There's a bunch more detail in the notes but the overriding vibe from the changes seems to be making the systems involved more effective and offering more choice to the players. FDEV did also see fit to sneak an awkwardly inappropriate advert for the Chieftain pre-built ship onto the end of the patch notes but overall the changes, before their implementation at least, seem well received. 
The post stipulates that the servers will be coming down at 8am on Tuesday morning and returning at 12pm. It didn't stipulate if the times quoted were in game UTC or UK BST which is an hour later but unless we hear otherwise we're thinking it's probably UTC. It's possible the patch and changes may get a mention at least on the next Frontier Unlocked livestream which if FDev follow the established schedule will be Wednesday next week but we're awaiting official word on that at the time of recording. Have you been to or are you planning on visiting Beagle Point? Will you be joining the attack on Haddad and how do you feel about the changes coming to the Thargoid war system? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.